Hello, Namaskar and a very good afternoon to all the viewers watching NCRT's live interactive session. This is Simran Singh and you have all connected with us through eVidya channel number 8. And besides this, viewers, you can also connect with us through different mediums and uh, we also have our YouTube channel for all of you. And for next half an hour, we have a session of English language for all the students of class 8. And the topic that we are going to discuss today, well, it's a poem titled as On the Grasshopper and the Cricket. So viewers, do you already know the difference between the grasshopper or the cricket and the different noises that they make? Can you suggest one? So please mention it in the comment section of NCRT official. And uh, also viewers providing us more insights into the conversation. We also have with us our guest in the studio. But before introducing you to her, there is an important piece of information for all of you regarding G20 presidency. We are proud of the fact that India assumed the G20 presidency and will convene the G20 leaders summit for the first time in the country in this year, that's 2023. The nation is deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism. India's G20 presidency is a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play a very important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of everyone and, in doing so, manifesting the true spirit of Vasudhev Kutumbakam, or should I say, the world is one family. So let me introduce you to the expert for today's program. She is Ms. Anshul. Namaskar, ma'am. Namaskar. We welcome you. Thank you she so much. She is TGT English, currently serving at Sarvodde Kanya Vidyale, Tuglakabad from New Delhi. And viewers in this live interactive session, if you have any of the queries, you know the different mediums through which you all can reach out to us. One of them is our contact number that has been flashing on your screens in all our programs. You may kindly note it down, it is 8800440559. And for this particular program, if you have any of the queries, you can always write to us at dth.class8 at the rate ciet.nic.in. So without further ado, let's begin the conversation and let's get to know more what are we going to understand in the poem. So ma'am, what are we going to discuss today? We're talking about On the Grasshopper and Cricket, which is by John Keats. And we're going to look at its explanation about the poet and things like that. Uh, well, uh, that's great. Uh, so in the first place, I would like to ask you the same question that I asked from our viewers. What is the basic difference between the grasshopper and the cricket? How can we make out uh, the identification of the two? Well, uh, the first differentiation stands in the kind of heads they both have. Crickets, uh, while they have a round head, uh, the grasshoppers, they have a little taller head. Alongside, of course, grasshoppers are greener and uh, crickets are brownish color. And uh, the most important aspect of their difference, I believe, is that crickets, when they make noise, they rub their wings to their legs. That's okay. how the noise is made. Hmm. While grasshoppers, they rub their wings to themselves. That's how the noise is made. So, we'll be talking about cricket and grasshopper and I believe... Uh, uh, two of them stands different now. Alright, so now we know the difference. Uh, so, little bit uh, we can make out of the title. But as of now, let's uh, begin the conversation with our poem. Alright, so let's get ahead and let's first have a reading first of On the Grasshopper and Cricket by John Keats. The poetry of earth is never dead. When all the birds are faint with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees, a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new mown meat. That is the grasshoppers, he takes the lead. In summer luxury he has never done with his delights, for when tired out with fun, he rests at ease beneath some pleasant weed. The poetry of earth is never se uh, ceasing never, on a lone winter evening, when the frost has wrought a silence, from the stove there shrills the cricket's song, in warmth increasing ever and seems to one in drowsiness half lost, the grasshoppers among some grassy hills. So Simran, would you like to give an, another reading? Of course, and all, all our viewers can read along. Uh, so it's the story of uh, grasshopper and the cricket. The poetry of earth is never dead, when all the birds are faint with the hot sun, and hide in cooling trees. A voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new mown bead, mead. That is the grasshoppers. He takes the lead in summer luxury he has never done with his delights. For when tired out with fun, he rests at ease 
beneath some pleasant weed the poetry of earth is ceasing never on a lone winter evening when the frost has wrought a silence from the stove there shrills the cricket's song in warmth increasing ever and seems to one in drowsiness half lost the grasshoppers among some grassy hills well thank you so much simran that was a beautiful reading all right so let's get going and let's discuss our poetry stanza by stanza let's look at the first few lines and uh, i'll read them again for you all so then we'll dis- uh, start the discussion the poetry of earth is never dead when all the birds are fain with the hot sun and hide in cooling trees a voice will run from hedge to hedge about the new mown mead that is the grasshoppers he takes the lead in summer luxury he has never done with his delights for when tired out with fun now this particular one stanza it starts with the line the poetry of earth is never dead john keats over here is telling about how the earth sings every time you know ir- irrespective of the weather out there and irrespective of the season out there you will always find the earth the nature singing its tune when all the birds are faint with the hot sun when all the ba- birds are facing the hot sun and even when they are tired when they are uh, you know thirsty they will still uh, they'll go back to their place they'll go back to the cool trees still a voice will run you know uh, from hedge to hedge from shrub shrub to shrub a voice you will hear which is that of the grasshopper now he um, you know he takes the lead he he takes the charge of keeping the earth happy making those happy sounds that you hear during the summer months and he will never be tired doing that so this lyrical voice that uh, we hear in this particular stanza is talking about how the birds they are uh, you know they feel the hot uh, outside they go and rest in the trees but while our grasshopper he is still singing the song that he wishes to sing so now, uh, could we say that this mean that the seasons or the impact of seasons that we have on human beings is uh, more or less similar with the animals or the birds as well we definitely see that in terms of lots of animals and birds yet the poet over here says that the seasons even when they impact mm. there is some kind of music that is mm. always playing and the viewers the listeners the human beings the animals have to find that music because the earth never stops singing so that that's how the grasshopper takes the lead it takes the charge of making that sound and um you know when he satisfied when his delights when he's tired out he rests beneath some pleasant weed the pleasant weed over here is the the grass the pretty grass that is out there in summer and our grasshopper takes rest there so this is about the first stanza and also the first line of the poem that we read is uh, the poetry of the earth is never dead so if we take it in the literal meaning uh, the earth doesn't sing or there's no uh, no sound or no noise that we hear from the earth but uh, why is there something particularly the poetry of the earth uh what does this uh, connote so when we say the word poetry of earth it is the music of earth that we are talking about yeah. we are always hearing some sound from the natural phenomena be mm. it the water that is flowing be it the air be it the cool breeze that you see be it some crickets chirping be it a grasshopper out there who's making little noises there is always some sound which you will hear mm. and it's up to you it has to be you who has to find the sound and find the beauty in earth at that moment and that that is uh, what human beings do giving uh, beautiful names to these voices and someone like john keats said that it's the poetry of the earth true that john keats has been known uh, for bringing out the best of the nature he is a romantic poet and uh, uh he always says that how we as human beings have to look at nature for inspiration yeah. so that is what he also talks about over so here so let's follow another stanza for the understanding well so i'll give it a reading first and uh, <clears throat> the poetry of earth is ceasing never on a lone winter evening when the frost has wrought a silence from the stove there shrills the cricket's song in warmth increasing ever and seems to one in drowsiness half lost the grasshoppers among some grass grassy hills so this again we begin with the first line which is uh, there in the uh, beginning of the poem we repeat that the poetry of earth is ceasing never it never stops the music of the earth it never stops and the poet says that 
whenever you wish to find this music it's always out there you know if the earth is always having that music and you need to find it so we go ahead and uh, we hear that uh, now the season has changed from summer wherein the birds were taking shade in the in the cool trees now we are moving to winter on a lone winter evening and uh, the word lone is used here reason being because it's winter evening it is already snow there's frost out there and hence uh, there's nobody outside so it's a lone winter evening that we see and um, this frost has brought a silence wrought the word means brought and it has brought a silence in the in the vicinity in the surroundings and no there's nobody hence um, we see it's a lone winter evening there is nobody and then from the stove there shrills so we hear this particular shrilling sound near the stove now stove is of course burning and uh, since it's pretty cold outside we hear a shrill coming from near the stove so there's this particular animal which is the cricket in this case which is sitting beside the stove and it's getting it, its heat from there and uh, as and when the heat increases the sound of the cricket's song also increases and it is denoted by the line the cricket's song in warmth increasing ever so we do get to know that uh, this sound is increasing as the cricket starts feeling warm enough so this in this particular one we saw that uh, summers we had the grasshopper singing and winters we now have the cricket singing but um, we eventually come to know that a person who is half lost in drowsiness who's you know kind of sleepy who's um, you know probably about to just go to bed and has take has decided to take a nap and uh, this person decides that uh, this song this music this shrill sound that is coming from is uh, is probably some grasshopper singing in some grassy hills so um, a romantic person romantic here in the sense somebody who feels close to nature feels that uh, it is uh, it is already spring it is already the beautiful time of spring when the flowers are already there and the grasshoppers are singing now this particular cricket provides that kind of solace provides that kind of feeling to to the listeners to the humans to the half drowsy uh, listener uh, sleepers there that uh, they are already in the comfortable space they are already in the uh, time when grasshoppers are singing and chirping so in this way the nature is keeping itself alive you know the merry making is there the singing mm. is there and irrespective of the season irrespective of the weather out there the nature always sings so we we reiterate the fact that the poetry of earth the music of earth the song of earth it never stops uh, so as you mentioned a term here uh, that the poet is a uh, the poet is a romantic and there's romanticism that we can see in this particular poem but uh, generally romanticism or being romantic is taken in a different sense between two lovers right. but when we talk about the romanticism of a text or a literature in english particularly so what are the uh, different ways through which we can understand romanticism so romanticism was a movement that uh, that talked about moving away from the industries we had the industrial revolution and it talked about setting up lot of industries people were working like crazy mm -hmm. and uh, they had very a uh, sad state of affairs to be very honest they were paid very less they were made to work long hours so these romantic poets they were of two generations the first and the second and john keats is mm. of the second generation these romantic poets they said that they would want the people to move away from the industries and look back at nature for inspiration right so when you are looking at the nature for inspiration you will find beauty in almost everything you know yes. the the trees become beautiful the grass becomes beautiful and uh, the flowers become beautiful and this is where you need to find beauty so john keats again was trying to bring back the romantic idea of life which is being closer to nature now romantics of course in a very um today's sense stands in a in a different perspective but for the poets of that time it uh, it was all about be closer to nature or maybe in love with nature right it's love for the nature great so let's uh, proceed ahead with more understanding of the poem well uh, we'll uh, talk a bit about john keats now and uh, john keats was born in uh, born on october 31st 1795 and he 
uh, passed away in February 1821 and he was uh, again as I said mm. earlier was the second generation of the poets of the romanticism movement. His first published poem was O Solitude, it was again a sonnet. Now sonnets as this poem also is our poetry uh, uh, is a poetry with a uh, with 14 lines so they are divided into two parts eight plus six lines and that is what makes it a sonnet hmm. also for a sonnet there has to be a very specific number of syllables that they follow so it's a very rigid structure that we follow while writing a sonnet uh, it follows the structure of iambic pentameter which means that it has 10 syllables in each line so we'll be covering would, that would in the next session. Would you also like to elaborate more on syllables for our viewers? Um, that would be yes. So if we if we take a word like um, probably singing right. Hmm. So when I say singing I ha like would you would you like to give, give it a try say singing. Singing. So how would you divide the word into how many? Sing and ing right so this becomes two syllables yeah. over here right syllables are the uh, small parts in which we can divide a word in and our sonnets uh, all the sonnets that are written they can be divided into all the words together will be divided into 10 pairs of syllables hmm. so this and sonnets follow a very rigid structure they cannot move away from the 10 syllable pair and uh, they will have to have um, 16 lines in them in 8 and 6 form they cannot have like those 14 lines cannot be 7 and 7 or maybe 6 and 8 it has to be 8, eight and, and 6 and form. Six. Again a very interesting thing about John Keats is that uh, he passed away at a very young age you know he was just 25 when he passed away and he got most of his recognition post you know um, his death. So, um, his works uh, were, were considered one of the greatest only after he passed away. Now, this is I think one of the very much very much like an irony of his life that uh, such a celebrated poet, such a such a great poet and then he got his recognition posthumously. Yeah. So, yes, so uh, coming back to a poem uh, which is uh, on the grasshopper and the cricket, this um, poem compares to different natural seasons we see the summers and we see the winters we see that uh, the birds are fainting and they are seeking solace in the cool trees but we also see at the same time that there is super cold out there there is lone winter evening there is frost which has brought in silence and yet in both the seasons we do hear the poetry of the earth we do hear that uh, the earth is singing and uh, it is making that you know beautiful sound and giving you poetry. So, Keats over here is actually presenting the beauty of both seasons you know he says that every season has uh, every season mm. has its um, good and bad aspect yet you will always find the natural beauty present in the in the season. So, I think this is what the poetry is about and uh, we'll be talking about the metaphor and similes of and course. Person in the in the upcoming but sessions. But uh, before that I, I have a question for you. So, this particular text might seem easy yeah. at the very beginning while we are reading the lines and it is I, I believe that it is uh, understood by the meaning and by right. reading the lines. But at the same time uh, getting to know the innate meaning of the poem how this should be taught in a class. So, are there any strategies or the tips for the teachers that how this particular text or the sonnet uh, can be presented to the class or to the uh, students per se. Um, I believe the first step should be to first actually read the poetry because mm. uh, we have class 8 learners who are probably 11, 12, 13, 14 sometimes who are in class 8. So, first read the poetry and then bring about what is a sonnet and let them identify if the 8 and the 6 uh, line rule is being followed and if the first 8 lines are talking about the sa same thing and these next 6 lines are talking about the same thing. If they are able to identify then of course tell them this is how a sonnet is written. A prerequisite for this can also hmm. be that students are already aware what a syllable is. Hmm. So, they will be able to identify how many syllables are there in each line and they will be able to figure out that if this is following the particular pattern of a, of a sonnet. So, yes we are supposed to introduce sonnets to them, we are supposed to introduce what are the kinds of sonnets and of course, we, we can uh, teach the poetry first and then talk about the sonnet and then you know discuss its meaning. Yes and ma'am uh, besides understanding the text of uh, any story or particularly if we talk about the poems 
why is it important to also understand the elements of a poetry as you just mentioned it's a metaphor or right. simile or personification or the rhyming scheme or whether it's a sonnet or not uh, why are uh, why is it important to also know these categories every uh, literary piece that that exists uh, simran it has something or the other which relates to the life of the poet right yeah. so every like if if you read uh, class 10th has a poem called fire and ice hmm. and if you if you go about what exactly robert frost was reading you will hmm. get to know that he was reading dante and the number of lines in uh, dust and snow are direct inspiration from dante's inferno so when you read about a uh, poet's life you are able to identify the elements of the poem and how are they related to the poet's life so probably a metaphor will be coming from an experience of the poet himself or the po- metaphor would be a political satire maybe mm. so this actually gives an in-depth analysis of any literary piece not just poems but it also can be of any literary piece and it helps us in understanding what the you know background situation of the poet was or uh, we can say that maybe these elements of poetry they are sort of uh, ornaments true 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 so we always say that poetic devices are what beautify the poem you yes. know they they make it beautiful the, they make the language beautiful mm. so they they add the beauty to it and is there any concluding message for all our viewers because it's a beautiful poem and it's close to nature and it's even uh, cl- being closer to the text we understand that there is something related to nature that the poet wants to bring out so something with regard to that you would like to offer to our viewers i think um, the message is uh, crystal clear simran it says that always listen to the poetry of the earth listen to the music that earth is giving you and uh, you know just just be aware of your surroundings be in the present moment be mindful and enjoy the present moment thank you so much for being a part of this conversation and you, uh, shedding light on this literary piece for all of us Thank you to all the viewers who have connected with NCERT for this particular live session of English and before wrapping up this particular program here is an important piece of information for all of you regarding the availability of NCERT textbooks so as you all know that for the academic year 2023 to 2024 NCERT textbooks are available widely across the country and you may purchase them directly from the different sales counters of NCERT Also you can place an order online for NCERT textbooks and at the same time if you would like to download or read the particular text or the textbooks uh, in the form of PDF then you can download it from the different mediums and one of them is the Diksha platform e pathshala website and NCERT's mobile application in order to explore more in this regard uh, feel free to explore the website of NCERT that will be www.ncert.nic.in once again thanking all of you for being a part of this conversation and do not go anywhere because next up we have our session of social science for all our class 8 students and the topic that we are going to discuss is when people rebel history then what happens so to understand about it uh, keep watching evidya channels and be connected with ncert official namaskar